Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Corpse Party Blood Covered Repeated Fear for the 3DS. Now where we last left off, I achieved the true end for chapter one for chapter one, and well Psycho bit the Psycho bit the dust in a pretty uh, gruesome way. Not fun. Just simply not fun. Especially for poor Naomi. And then after that, I unlocked a uh, extra chapter in the extras menu, where I uh, basically played uh, three uh, middle schoolers from a different school, completely unaffiliated with uh, the high school that the main cast is from, and I basically went on a scavenger hunt f for a fancy ghost. Helped him find a nice pair of lenses and a fancy hat. Now, whether or not I'm going to uh, see this particular trio of students again, in either another extra chapter or maybe even within the main game, I have no idea. Anyway, the reason I'm here in chapter one right now rather than starting chapter two is, well, pretty much the same reason I gave. As Well, as I said towards uh, the end of the last episode, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to find the other two bad ends of chapter one first before I move on to chapter before I move on to chapter two proper. Both for completionist's sake and just to uh, make sure I cover all my bases with the with the uh, main game, just in case there might be something here I can only unlock if I only see all the other endings first. Because I've had that happen to me before in a few games too, where I had to see basically all the different endings before I could basically get the true definitive final ending for said game. So until I am shown definitive proof otherwise I'm going to assume that the same thing is that that same rule is going to apply to this game too so again I'm just gonna make sure I cover my bases and just make sure I get all the uh, endings I can uh, unlock I, I make sure I see all those first before I proceed on to the main story should I happen to unlock any more true ends along the way throughout the series anyway with that being said in case I run into any trouble finding these other bad ends dur during chapters I've already cleared, I may consult a guide that can help me uh, fi that can help me figure out how to unlock the other bad ends that I may struggle unlocking on my own. I hope I won't have to do that too often because I never really like consulting uh, guides during a game I'm playing. Makes me feel like I'm cheating, but well, I won't be surprised if I won't be too terribly surprised if I do, because given the fact that there's plenty of alternate of different ends for this kind of game, I I really won't be surprised if there is at least a few endings along the way that'll really have me stumped, and so yeah, so I'll just have to swallow my pride when what will most likely be an inevitable decision I'll have to make comes. Anyway, uh, with, that, with all that said, let's just go ahead and just get started. So, I got two ends I got to find, as I said before, so... I made a second save spot that I am not... I'm going to try my best not to save over from uh, that little classroom that I was just in. Because that's just right after I had that encounter with our first ghost and uh, the young girl in the red dress. So hopefully, I can unlock the R2 endings from here on out without having to uh, back paddle or uh, restart the game very often. Hey, all your friends. Now, yeah, this is classroom 3A. I wonder if I can, uh, I wonder if that room is required for me to see any of, see the true ending of chapter one. I, I assume it is here, because, I mean, it was a story event that happened, same with that, same with, uh, that bed in the infirmary, so, yeah, I'm just going to, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to see if maybe I can trigger certain scenes without having to uh, trigger every single one that, I, that I've come across 
all throughout chapter one, if, if I'm making any sense here. Because I have a feeling here that one of the endings I, un I can unlock may require me to not see a certain event or, or something somewhere along the way. I know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just speculating here, but, uh, I mean, what else, I mean, what else can I really do, right? I mean, like I said, I'm trying not to, uh, refer to a guide or anything as often as I can, because, well, this is a blind let's play. I would prefer to solve most of this shit on my own if I can help it. I don't want to feel like too big of an idiot. Your ID here. So yeah, if I stumble across if I stumble across anything new, I will make sure. So if I stumble across anything new, obviously, so yeah, for, for parts we've already seen, I'm just gonna go ahead and just skip right on through them until we find something new. And uh, once I'm certain that we've uh, done everything we can to unlock the other uh, wrong ends, then we'll move on to chapter two. こっちから入ると、向こう、あっちで待ち伏せすればいいってこと
Was this here before? Victims' Memoirs 1 of 5? Let our parting be but temporary. I send thee flowers, my beautiful flower, as thou wait, waste eternal for my return. Beautiful flowers thou canst see. And shouldst I ever broke, break free of this hell, and retake my place at thy side, these words I couldst never say, and these feelings I could never give will all be laid before, and will be all be laid. Excuse me, will all be laid bare for thee. Okay, so one of five. So I, yeah, I don't remember. Was this actually here before? When I uh, played the chapter, when I ch played the chapter the first time. I guess I'll try to find these. Find more of them. Hey, another one, right there. Victims' Memoirs, two of five. Alas, the only, um, the only flowers that bloom in hell are white, 
as freshly fallen snow. So on a lark, thy heart, pure as a heart can be, I wish to stab with pens and scatter the petals. Let the white flowers be dyed red thy by thee. Well, that turned morbid real quick. This is not going to be a very pleasant memoir altogether, all is it? I can already tell. It's going to be... A it's going to have a very morbid ending indeed. Oh. Are you the next one? Yep. Victim's Memoirs. Three and five. Woe is me, woe is me. The me who never stopped loving the... Even though thou choosest to move on, I will always love thee. Thee forevermore, 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 forevermore. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. Whose crotch is raw and bloody. I scratch it so much I want to show it to thee to prove that it is thine and that I still love thee. We're only halfway through this and already we've reached gentle mutilation. What a lovely piece of literature I'm, I've come across. Uh, maybe this way is the next one? If not, then I'll try going upstairs. Five. Didn't want to see your face. Your face is for no one but me, as I burn in the fires of hell. I continue to live here. I am not dead yet. Let our... The remainder of the page is caked with blood so thick as to obscure any further writing. I think... Whoever wrote this thing took their uh, adoration for the subject for the subject of their affections a little too far. I feel bad for um, whoever has their uh, lustful gaze on. Well, whoever this guy or gal just decide to write this little lovely little memoir about. Okay, you're still here. Now, where's the last one gonna be? Maybe upstairs? I'll check here first, though. I think you're the same, too, yeah? Yeah. So you are. Well, I found it! The fifth and final chapter of the victim's memoirs is sitting on the ground here. Read it. I don't like that's giving me a choice to, uh... Is there a safe spot nearby? Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna save real fast. Because clearly it's giving me... Yeah, I, I, I'm sure that uh, if I read that thing, something big is probably going to happen. So I'm just going to save real fast and just go read it. The, go read it then. Therefore, in case uh, I get an ending right then and there or something. Oh, whoa! No, 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 no! I almost saved over the wrong file. Whew.
I didn't. I always. It doesn't happen very often, but the very few times I've accidentally saved over a file in a game I didn't mean to save over. Each and every incident of that had ever happened at that was just. Next tier levels of frustrating. Especially for those really long games. Okay, let's see what this thing has to say. Victim Memoirs 5 of 5. You can just die. Apologize to me with your death, you bitch. I'm going to run your intestines from your rip your intestines from your body. Oh fuck. And make red flowers bloom and and something all over that white skin of yours. This can't ever be able to that hmm I'm trying to I'll tell if you're a boy or a girl anymore I'm done with you So I'm, I'm I'm assuming that I. So uh, what did the object of your affection turn out to be the opposite sex or something that you expected them to be? I'm not a hun I'm not 100 percent sure what that last sentence was trying to say. All I could really tell for sure is that they were angry or just completely insane by that point. Anyway, uh, Seiko, why are you sitting in that chair? Huh? Seiko? Seiko? Poor girl. Poor girl. Seiko? Naomi. You poor girl. You poor, poor girl. Seiko? What's happened to you? Seiko? <laughs> Seiko, no, please. What's going on? Seiko's spirit was clearly not entirely intact. She was a shell of her former self. And it didn't seem like she was coming back. It had been around four days since we'd gotten trapped in the school, give or take. Oh shit, and you're probably starving to death right now. Because I doubt there's food. And two of us were stuck here. To you forever, alone together in this hell, never again to see another living being while we still drew breath. Naomi. Seiko? Naomi. Seiko, have you finally come back to your senses? You have no idea how worried I was. Naomi, you poor, poor, you poor girly, you poor, poor girl. I don't think she came back to her senses, Naomi. <laughs> I can't. I can't take this any. Uh oh. Uh, you're not gonna off yourself, are you? You probably are.
Okay, I think that's, uh... Let me look. Okay, ending number four. Read victim's memoirs to completion and succumbed to darkening? What's darkening? Some kind of... Wait... Given what happened to Seiko, something about something about her spirit no longer being intact. Some kind of paranormal madness, maybe? Well, if that's the case, then great. I now have to worry about uh, supernatural forces driving me dri driving the characters crazy now. Lovely. Okay. So, we got one more ending left to get. So, I guess I will just keep wandering around doing my thing around the school around the school until something new happens. So, I'll see you guys again soon. Okay, I pretty much checked every nook and cranny that I could find within the school, and I don't see anything else that looks like it might be able to lead me to a different ending. And I've avoided uh, going into that classroom with the newspaper that, if I were to examine it, it would lock me in there for a while. So, I'm pretty much here in the infirmary again. I've lied on the hospital bed here, talked to Seiko for a bit, and now I'm going to have to most likely try to run away from that nasty ghost again. So, here's hoping that me avoiding that classroom might be what I need to do to avoid getting the uh, main ending of chapter one and get me that last wrong end I need. Okay, we're right at the uh, scene again with what happened with uh, Seiko in the bathroom, so maybe the ending that I'm looking for is here. Yep. Sorry, I'm walking inside. Someone's definitely in there. Maybe I... Wait. Maybe I can save you again. Okay, this time I'm not going to waste any time. I'll just get this emptied. Okay, I'm going to save you this time. I failed again, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Shit. out exactly like it did in the true ending. So... Did I do something wrong? Well, this is certainly different, right here. Uh-oh. 
Oh dear. Okay. Whoops. Did I accidentally skip something? So. You all look like elementary school age kids. You're blue, so... Friendly? Also, you all look like you died pretty gruesome deaths. Child spirits? I, I can't move! And I can't even speak! I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm really, 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 really scared. Uh, what are you doing to, to Naomi? Somehow or another, Naomi found herself with a large pair of sewing scissors in her hand. Her mouth was agape, and she was lowering the open scissors into it as if intending to swallow them whole. Oh, shit. Oh, this is not going to be pretty. Are you doing this to her? I thought the blue ones were supposed to be friendly. <laughs> Shit. I can't trust any of you guys then, huh? I can feel the scissor blades clanging against my molars. And I can hear it too. What am I doing? Swallowing a pair of sewing scissors, apparently. Cut it out. Why would I try to swallow a pair of scissors? My hand's moving on its own. Oh, shit. No. Stop. Ugh. Oh, shit. <laughs> you little bastards did this, didn't you? I thought I could trust you. Yikes. Horrible way to go. Um, I'm assuming that was... Okay, we got all the different endings now. Possessed by spirits. Severed own tongue with scissors. Okay, so it's not quite literally swallowing... Them with... Swallowing scissors, but still... Yikes. So your hand was moving on its own, so did something possess... Oh, oh, yeah, so something possessed you then. And you it made you sever your tongue. So the question I have here is, what possessed you exactly? Because... If it was those kids, then clearly that first blue spirit we came across was lying to me when it said... Actually, no, it wasn't them. It was that note I found by one of those dead... by one of the corpses I, fa I found in the school. The one where she made notes that the blue spirit seemed to be generally friendly, while the uh, differently colored ones were either not... at least not trust... inherently trustworthy, or were flat-out malevolent. And they said, and she said that the blue ones were the relatively safe ones. So, if it was not this, if it was not those three kids I saw who made Naomi sever her tongue, then they were just simply bystanders, spectators to what was happening, and something else had to have made Naomi cut or sever her tongue with those scissors. Those kids were just there to see what was going to happen.
Hmm. I guess what will help me prove or disprove these theories I have here is just maybe trying to f learn more about the malevolent spirits in this place, maybe? Because, again, if I can take what that first blue spirit told me face value, and that I could generally trust the blue-tinted spirits, then it had to have been something malevolent that made Naomi do that. In which case, maybe the same could be said for Seiko, for her hanging herself. Maybe something possessed her and made her hang herself. Because as, as harsh as the argument that Seiko had with Naomi was, I don't think it was enough to cause her to commit suicide. She had to have been influenced by something. I have no definitive proof. Maybe uh, Seiko just is a walking mass of uh, this uh, is a walking mass of past traumas or something I'm not unaware of. And this one incident here drove her over the edge. But somehow I don't think that's what this is. I think something possessed her too. Whatever. I guess we can. F I guess we'll find out the more we play. So I'm going to go ahead and start Chapter 2. And it looks like I'm in control of Yui. View the Chapter 2 opening. Duh. Katazuita. <sighs> Phew. That should just about do it. I hate being in charge of the gym equipment. So, flashback time. All because of that stupid co-ed meet in two days. Why can't the boys' class rep take care of the grunt work? Yeah. Freaking Kishinuma. Does he even know what a delicate flower I am? Most I've ever had to lift before was chopsticks, and he expects me to lug around a damned pommel horse. <laughs> Naomi? That is one pretty sight. You staring at Naomi's ass again? Huh? Huh? What it? What is? Called it. You horny thing, you. That booty you got. What? Yours is way cuter. Mine. <laughs> mine's all plump like a duck's. A duck's. T a, a duck's butt is not plump. It is fluffy because of feathers. What are you saying? You got what they call childbearing hips. It's a good thing. For what? Pushing a living, breathing human being out of your hoo ha? Because, um. At pretty much everybody who, who I've ever heard or told me about it, who, who told anybody or me or anybody else about it, has pretty much said that childbirth is fucking painful. And I believe it. It means when you get older, you can pump out all the babies you want, the greatest of ease. Since when was childbirth ever easy? I'm actually kind of happy to hear you say that. <laughs> you do have a certain motherly quality to you, Naomi. It's no wonder you're so good with kids. But, but of course. I'm hoping to raise four children one day. Why four? Isn't one or even two bad enough? I can't imagine trying to take care of four kids. Like, just the financial expenses alone. 
I mean, hey, you want to be a parent, I mean, good on you, but four? You better get a good paying job then, and I hope you have the patience of a saint, because four children? Yikes. Sounds like you'll be making some lucky guy real happy. Sure, if he wants four kids, same as you. Meanwhile, in the ever-so-lovely present, we have this lovely sight greeting us. No more, uh, gazing at- no more gazing at- no more booty gazing for the two of you, I guess. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No! Chapter 2 Wasn't that Nakashima's voice? Wait a minute, how are you able to hear her? I mean, aren't you on a different plane of existence or something? Because I think that, yeah, that blue spirit, that, we, that first blue spirit told us that we were all in the same building, more or less, but we were on different planes of existence. So, the only way we could directly interact with each other is finding a way to either get into the same plane that the people you're trying to reach are, are, are in, or find a way to get them to come to you. And yet, I've heard Yuka's voice a couple times, and now you've heard uh, and you you've heard Naomi, I think. I think her last name is Nakashima. So clearly, some bits of dialogue between the students and well, the teacher here can apparently reach you got reach each other. Okay, so if that's the case, then well, that's clearly got to be what's happening. I mean. So there's got to be some way to get more than just your voice through. Again, which I guess would con pretty much confirm what that blue spirit was telling me. So I guess we just got to try to see if maybe we can find a way to reunite everybody. She was screaming. What do I do? I can't let anything happen to my students. Okay, so... You two are also here as well, so... We got... Okay, we're... So... Satoshi... And Yuka. I think they are the only ones... That I'm aware of here that are unaccounted for still. You don't look okay, Ayumi. Shinozaki, it's all right. Please, calm down. But you heard it too. Outside, her voice. I did. I think she's hyperventilating. No shit, Sherlock. I'd give her a paper bag to breathe into, but there aren't any around. I guess all I can tr do is try to calm her breathing before she passes out. It probably wasn't a real voice. I'm sure it just sounded like one. Maybe it was the building settling. I'll go check it out though and see if I can figure out what it w was for sure. Don't split up! You two stay right here, okay? <laughs> Miss Yui, wait! Don't leave us! Shinozaki. 
It's okay, Teach. I'll keep an eye on Shinozaki. Okay, well, at least one of you is going to volunteer to stay with one other person, at least. So, I, I guess that's good and all, but still, strength in numbers. It wouldn't hurt to have all three of you sticking together. Ah, take off. Better yet. How about I go take a look, and you wait here? Not a chance. Until I can verify everyone's safety. I want to keep you two out of harm's way. Well. Okay, I guess. Be careful, though. No! Look, she'll be fine. Jeez. I'm counting on you, Kishinuma. I'll be back in no time. No problem. I'm actually scared. My legs are even shaking. I have no idea what's going on. My head is spinning. I can't make sense of anything. My chest hurts like my heart is encased in ice. And I can't shake this dizziness. Or this nausea. But even when I think about the possibility of something horrible happening to my dear students, I can feel a newfound energy welling up from within me. I feel like, if nothing else, I can at least play the part of the level-headed adult. Okay, so there was that board thing right there, so... Valor, thy name is Education. Okay, so this board is right here, so... Did you guys just find that board in that classroom and then just set it here at some point? Because if not, then... Maybe my actions with Naomi and Seiko influenced this plane of existence to some degree? And put that board there? Okay, what's down here? There's a strange yellow fluid congealing inside the rest of the bucket. Okay, so the bucket's in a different spot, too. What's down here? Hey, an item. There's something here. A crystal shine of a faint purple glow is nestled among the debris in the ground. Take it. I'm gonna leave it right there. What I'm gonna do, first and foremost, is try to find a safe spot. And then, once I do, I'll come back for it then. And then, save again and then see where things go from there. Anyway, I also noticed the school is colored a bit differently, too. S some spots look a little different, too. No teachers allowed on the third floor. Why not? This is a school, isn't it? It's a key, isn't it? The label on the key reads 3A, take it. I'm going to leave you there, too. Just in case. Return home immediately. Those who remain here... ...will go hungry and die of starvation. That reminds me. Poor Monette's all alone. He must be one hungry kitty by now. Oh no, you got, you got, that's right, I think, did, didn't your uh, little uh, character profile thing in that extras menu thing say you had a cat? I don't remember, but, okay, you have a cat, I definitely gotta make sure that you survive then, so you can go home and take care of your cat. I will not let you die. We must feed the kitties. Windows only deep, immutable darkness can be seen. 
Hmm. No sign of foliage, huh? A disturbingly large amount of human hair is crammed into the cabinet, filling each shelf to overflowing. Looking closely, there are an excessive number of bugs excitedly scampering all over. The sight alone is enough to make your skin crawl. Lovely. So now we have bugs to deal with, too. Heavenly Post. Breaking news, serial kidnapping and murder. Over the past month, numerous ch children have gone missing from within the town, and authorities quickly turned to kidnapping as most like an explanation. Okay, this looks like the same note. I heard something about this once before, but I never realized just how horrific an incident it really was. Oh dear. Something wants me to follow. It's opening doors for me. Be very afraid, Mui. Is there a candle nearby? Okay, so I guess we'll definitely need to go back for that key. Okay, room 3A. Clearly we need to go into the classroom for sure, unlike in the first chapter, so... Can I even exit the classroom? It doesn't look like I can walk... I can just skirt along the edge there into the hall. That hall's huge. Whoa. <gasps> Hi, you're blue. Are you friendly? Well, if it isn't the teacher, are you all by yourself? Decide to stop shaking and shivering with the other two back in 1A, did you? I'll have you know I heard one of my students screaming and have set out to find her. So. I see. Regrettably. That won't be possible. This school exists in the Nexus where multiple dimensions overlap. It is but a single closed space in a sea of closed spaces. In other words, even though you may be in the same school as your screaming student, you and she occupy different dimensions. Which means you two can never meet. So this is more or less reaffirming what that first blue spirit in chapter 1 told Naomi and Seiko. But, unlike you, he assured us that it may be, it may be possible to uh, get everybody to meet again if we could find a way to get on the same nexus together. So... Why do you seem to think that why do you think that we can't meet, I wonder? If one of you should die, perhaps your body or your spirit may move from one space to another. Or no oh great, so is Sego going to be manifest as a ghost and try to communicate with everybody on the different next on the different dimensions? Maybe you can find some means of traver of transver <clears throat> excuse me traversing the planes freely as they do. <laughs> they. Consider this fair warning. Even if you should find the exact spot from which your students scream em emanated. She herself may not be there. And if she isn't, there's not a thing you can do about it. But I hear her voice. Yes, 
It is true that other children have been brought here quite recently. Children who, by all appearances, are indeed your students. But as I suggested, time and space do not behave as you'd assume here. There. Fragmented. You say you heard a scream. That scream may have taken place only a few minutes ago. Or perhaps, it occurred in another space many hours previous. It may have even been an echo from the future. Who's to say? <laughs> You're... Are you trying to make poor Ryui's head hurt? Because it might be working. But... With this phenomenon as it is, it's entirely possible for two closed spaces to have some small influence on one another, even when out of sync. Okay, so it's just as I suspected. It, it doesn't matter. I can't just ignore that agonizing scream and go on my merry way. Step aside! Well, I'll give you props, Yui. You certainly have a very big altruistic bone in your body. Uh, September 18th, day duty. Okay, you're still there. The shelves are filled with just about every variety of cutting implement. Kitchen knives, surgical tools, chisels, etc. All appear unusually sharp. With so many metal tools in one place, this cabinet must be exceptionally heavy. I hope, then, that nothing magically opens said cabinet and causes all those sharp objects to telekinetically fling in my general direction. That would be very bad. Step aside. Why don't you fuck off? You damned corporeal. Wait, so you're the same spirit? So spirits can change color, then. So in that case, there's no reason I should... There's no reason I should just inherently trust what any spirit tells me. Because, well, like us, like us corporeals, our moods can change for whatever reason, and we may grow a malevolent spine in our in ourselves for however long we feel angry and just decide, you know what? I don't like you. Here, go in this general direction. I promise you there's nothing bad waiting there for you, waiting to murder you silly. Shit. An earthquake? Oh shit! Oh shit. Oh, oh dear. I wonder how many knives and chisels and shit might be piercing your legs. In all the world, the most vile, untrustworthy individuals of them all are you school teachers. All you care about is your own well-being. You're not worried about your students. You're just worried about being held responsible if something should happen to them. <laughs> this really, really hurts. You're all the same. Every last one of you. And I won't be taken in by your lies anymore. Taken in? When you see a problem among your kids, you just keep your distance. Because you sure wouldn't want to get involved. Have to keep up appearances, right? 
You you just pick up you just pick out the problem children and chip away at them little by little until they either drop out or get expelled. You a bullying victim? You're not disciplining them. You're just raging at them. That's not I've never met a teacher who cared about her students. Not once! You... You're... Wrong. Oh, dear. Please, well, whoever you are, listen to reason. I'm pretty sure she's actually one of the very few nice ones. All of your students are destined to starve to death in these godforsaken halls. If they don't succumb to depression and kill themselves first. There's no other possible outcome. They'll all die meaningless deaths. Just like I did. And they sure won't be thinking about you when they take their final breaths. <laughs> Any last words, bitch? I'll tell them to your students as I end their miserable lives. <laughs> Come again. Spare my students. What was that? Please. I don't care what happens to me. Just please, spare their lives! They're not your children. You're not their mother. Are you really still pretending to care about them? Filthy liar. Did you know? When you die in this accursed place, you experience the pain you felt at the moment of your death for all eternity. And I'm going to crush you to dust. The pain must be unbearable, unimaginable, and you're going to feel that pain every moment of every day, forevermore. Asking me to spare you. It's what you really want, isn't it? Be honest with me. And I'll consider sparing your life. I do not trust you. I'm pretty sure you would just leave me to die anyway. Spare my students. Don't you harm a hair on their heads, you hear me? You were one stubborn little bitch. Oh god! For god's sakes, man! This is excruciating. I think my rib cage is broken. It feels like someone's pushing this cabinet down on top of me with superhuman force. I'm losing consciousness. No, teach! Don't die! You have a cat to feed! And the students!
<笑>苦しいかいそのまま潰れて死んだら<笑> Does it hurt? Aw, poor baby. I hope you get to enjoy your、uh, very pleasant hell that you're trapped in. You son of a bitch. Your corpse will look, like just, will look just like a dead frog on the side of the road. Everybody. Live. Love you all. Again, you son of a bitch. Meanwhile. Whoa! Another earthquake? I should have probably grabbed that crystal in this room then earlier. I think it's over. What's wrong? I just got a really bad feeling. We've got to go search for Miss Yui. What if she comes back while we're gone and we miss each other along the way? We're going! Alright already. Alright, alright already! But if we don't have any luck finding her, let's just make sure we come back to this room, okay? <laughs> How about we leave her a note? Shinozaki, do you have anything I could write with? I've got a pen. But no paper.、Huh? Well, there's always the teacher's desk. <laughs> Miss Yui, we've gone to find you. If we pass each other and you see this message, wait right here. We'll be back. How's that? Lunch. And kind of sloppy. It's your fault we have to leave our message at all, you know. But. She might be in trouble. Okay, okay. Just don't cry. We'll find her. You're not gonna like what you find. I can promise you that much. And. Is that thing gone? That little object? Okay, I'm just gonna check down here real fast to make sure that that thing is. Wait a minute. This wasn't here before, was it? No. Wasn't. Okay, so I guess I won't be able to grab that thing. Should have grabbed it as Yui then. So. I guess that's something I'm gonna have to、uh, do a repeat of in a later episode. Let's try going up here, see if we can find something first. Oh, that's open now. Don't do anything you'll regret. Think of your mother and your father. Remember their faces. You, only, you have only one life to live. Make it count. Do not waste the precious gift of existence. Why would he need a flyer for this? Yeah, seriously. Who's gonna kill themselves in here? I'd rather find my way out. Hmm. 
Nothing in here from what I can see. The door seems affixed to the wall like a model. It can't be opened. Interesting. Cold in here. Not to mention dark. Shinozaki, scary. Hey, Shinozaki. Do you have any more of those candles? Like the one you lit during the ghost story? I do. How about we light, light one up and take a quick breather? They give off some heat, right? Well, yeah, they're candles. Fire. Sure. This candle of mine really is kind of warm. Yeah, it is. Uh-oh. Hmm? Where'd my save data go? Unless this is just for... Okay, maybe it's... Maybe it gives you different save slots for the different chapters. In that case, I'll just go ahead and save at slot 1. And I'll save here at slot 2 as well. I guess I'm... Wanted to check a little bit. Oh. So the door over there is gone now. What the? Looks like a dead end. Did this happen during that last earthquake? Siui. Where are you? I'm really worried. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut, cut things off here. Still, shit. I mean, we're already... We only just started Chapter 2 and already we lost a teacher. If, if we can't save her no matter what, I'm going to be pissed. Because if nobody is going to be... If nobody's going to send for her cat... Should anybody, should any of us escape? I'm not going to be happy. The cat doesn't deserve to starve to death here just because some malevolent spirits in elementary school from days long past decide to act like a bunch of assholes and kidnap some innocent souls. Fucking jackasses. Anyway, I guess we'll explore this version of Heavenly Host with, uh, with uh, Yoshiki, wait, yeah, Yoshiki, and Ayomi in the next episode. I wonder if I'm going to, well, I wonder if I'm going to end up having them discover uh, Yui's corpse in the next episode. Either way, I know they're not going to be happy once they find out what happened. In fact, I'm also wondering if that's, that jackass spirit that I ran into is going to be something of a recurring antagonist through Chapter 2. Because, well, he already killed my beloved teacher. And he already said that he, he already said something about uh, snuffing out our lives, too. Just for, just out of spite, basically. So. Yeah, I won't be surprised if we run into him again. Either way, I, either way, I think I'm going to have my hands full in the next episode. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, Corpse Party Blood Covered, Repeated Fear for 3DS. If you did, and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.